So all of this is about exploitation of data, and of course, this data needs to be protected, to be, so what do we do in cybersecurity? Uh, thank you, Patrick, and thank you, Thierry, for this opportunity. We live in very interesting times. Uh, the security aspect has become a bit compounded with many conflicts. And in the allotted time, I will speak about seven distinct things. One will be the premise, second will be the threat, the third, uh, the strategy as we see it. Four, will mention about quantum technology, uh, but not quantum computing, which is what Francois would be speaking. AI and cyber, some examples and the future. The premise, let me lay down the premise. First, we may all agree that there are no air gaps in cybersecurity, be it perimeter, cloud, space, or edge. Number two, the surface area of cyber vulnerability has expounded many folds with the adoption of IOTs and sensors. This is particularly true because we are uh, living in the world where most of our uh, critical infrastructures are connected. Three, Encryption is everywhere, and securing our encryptions is the key to our di digital future or success. Today, we are more an encryption economy. The, an example would be to look at digital signatures. Uh, everything that we validate are based on digital signatures, and if there is a vulnerability on digital signatures, then we can imagine how our future might be compromised. Now, let me talk briefly about the threats. Global trends in cryptography are heavily compromised. Powerful algorithms like the Shows and the Growers uh, are using equally powerful computers that can crack down any encryption standards. They do that with quantum simulators, which are very powerful computers that can compromise encryptions. Quantum computers, uh, that is something it's like you know, we all know when there was the, uh, uh, the advent of Y2K, there was a date, but nobody knows when quantum computers will come in. It's, it's knowing the unknown. Third, the majority of encrypted web data relies on an encryption standard called RSA 2048. A quantum computer with 4099 qu qubits will break it in a few minutes. This we don't see going beyond 2028. 20, if not, it has already happened. Systems using today's cryptography for long-term author authentication is at risk. Just look at your health data. If that is compromised, well, that's why many of these hospitals are being hacked, uh, because their data has very long tail. And cryptography built on mathematical algorithms are vulnerable to brute force attack. Finally, the grid will become the first in the line of attack when nations conflict or there are other econo compelling economic narratives. This includes national defense systems, critical infrastructures, which most of us, most of what we have today, banks, financial institutions, healthcare, army, navy, they're all critical infrastructures. The strategy. Let me put out two or three of these broad strategies which are being employed now. The first one is hack now. Weaponize now. So if you have the algorithm, you have the cryptography to break these encryptions, you weaponize it now, or you hack now and store it, store it, and weaponize it later when you have the ability to break the encryption. So basically what we are try now trying is to move from mathematics to quantum physics, which according to pure science is it's much, much more difficult to crack. And this rests on two principles. One is the Heisen, Heisenberg's principle of uncertainty, which enables uh, the identification of eavesdropping. Actually, the, the pipe falls as soon as somebody comes into the chain. The second is the no cloning theorem, it prohibits copying of data from quantum state. These are two. And the third, there is a third one, which is the Bell's inequality principle, which prevents implanting attacks. On, phys on physical systems. Now let me speak about quantum technology. I'm not going into quantum computing. See, the, this arises of the second quantum revolution. 
Incidentally, the first quantum revolution was much of the touted technologies that we have, nuclear, semiconductor, and laser. The second is more characterized now by manipulation, individ manipulating individual quantum systems. For example, eavesdropping using quantum key distribution, quantum computing breaking the RSA code. I will now allude to AI and cyber. AI systems will be vulnerable to adversarial attacks from any domain where AI augments action, which means the moment you use AI, there is a vulnerability. It's like a boomerang. It can come back to you. Now, these attacks will involve evasion, data poisoning, manipulation, thereby rendering AI much ineffective. For example, let me give you a conflict scenario. The, let's say the field used is in AI is supercharged Intel, which is ISR. The AI use case in this case will be object detection, which is asset, person, and weapon. And the AI attack in this case would be extraction and evasion. So if you look at what the Russians were able to do with their military fields uh, in this current attack, you will see a lot of this exploitation happening where they were able to mask most of their uh, places where they had kept their uh, aircrafts. Now, examples I, I would give of AI uh, in a, in a, in a, uh, is the combination of AI and being used with HAPS. The, you know, using satellites uh, would be a little more challenging, but you have a, a HAPS which operate at a much uh, lower altitude, and these become aerial data centers. So tomorrow when you are moving into autonomous areas of conflict, you would be using more of HAPS. HAPS would act as area da aerial data centers, which will ensure quick communication to people who are on the field. And the second is, it's not a fiction, it's human enhanced uh, enhancement technology, which is cybernetically enhanced uh, human beings, which means that the human being you know, ha has implants in his body and he's able to connect to a HAPS and he's able to you know, take decisions much faster than than having to call to a command center. Now, finally, I would look at the future, which is the AI-based neural systems. So you have AI, you have quantum, but the challenge of AI uh, uh, or, or the success of con building quantum encryptions is based on how much complexity you can build. With AI, you are able to increase this complexity uh, using a technology which we call ciphertext. Currently, the highest standard that NIST has agreed is about two raised to the power of 256. But with AI-based uh, neural systems, you can increase this complex clump complexity of the cyber bit text to about two raised to the power of 2.6 million. So that's how uh, the future of... Uh, 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 the complexity of AI encryptions will be. There are pluses, there are minuses, but this is how I uh, will see the, the technology evolving. Uh, there are, you know, I, I have emphasized more on the military uh, part of it because the earlier adapters of all these advanced technologies, we believe are uh, defense forces, and it is only after the defense and the military use, it would become much more applicable in the civil world. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Um, <clears throat> good to point help. connecting with what, <clears throat> sorry, Kazuto mentioned about the need for distinctive policies. I would take two points here. Uh, is a, when it comes to AI and cybersecurity, you describe the complex system and it increases the attack surface, what we call the attack surface. The more complex your system is, it increases. Notably, what you've seen from Amina and what Toby explained means uh, a lot of identities will be created. All these machines will be identity. And you know, in cybersecurity, one of the biggest point is manage the identity, not, uh, and then the access based on the identity to the systems. So that's, that's a big complexity. And also, you use AI for the attack, uh, which is done. Uh, there is a kind of try to neutralize. Unfortunately, the parallelism is not yet in place, so uh, we have a few challenging times uh, ahead of us. So thank you, Toby, for this overview.